Hello and welcome. I am Scrapperlock, and this is Satisfactory Early Access. So, if you've been paying attention to my previous Let's Plays, I've pretty much stuck to City of Heroes and done Scrappers and Stalkers and Tankers. And I will continue to do that, but I've had the itch to play Satisfactory again recently. There's a new update, Update 3, that came out fairly recently. And that's what this game is. It added what you see in the background, pipes and some other things so that we can get water flowing into our factories. So Satisfactory is a factory building game. You go to an alien world and you extract resources from that world for a purpose. No one's really sure yet what that purpose ultimately will be um, because the game isn't finished and the ending isn't done yet. There are different uh, technologies that you're going to research and you build and build and build your factory to something really cool. Um, there's a lot of interesting 3D building abilities they give you in game. It's very flexible and I like building architecturally interesting and realistic designs and I enjoy doing it. I enjoy playing the game. It's a game a lot like Factorio. I've actually never played Factorio. Factorio is a 2D game where you really are just building horizontally in X and Y's dimensions, but Satisfactory is a 3D game. As you can see here, you can build in the Z direction vertically. And you can go up really, really, really high and down really, really, really low. If you find pits and openings in the planet, you can go down really far. And so we're going to start a new game of Satisfactory. Now I actually had done some recordings, <coughs> excuse me, some Let's Play recordings of this earlier, and this is un not uncommon. I get partway through and I say, you know what? I don't like the way I've started and I want to do something different. Now, the way Satisfactory works is you can deconstruct and reconstruct your base however you want, but um, it tends to be sometimes easier if you're not that far along in the game to just start over and that's what I'm going to do. Now, the normal place to start is in the grass fields. That's kind of the newbie area and there's lots of biomass in the grass fields and biomass is a really important resource early on. Harder is the northern biome, even harder is the dune desert with uh, very little foliage, right? So it's going to be very hard to get biomass and that's your first energy source so that could make things very difficult and then there's the rocky desert. Um, supposedly there have been some changes to the rocky desert in the past, that was my favorite place to start. It's very pretty and very interesting, and there are some pretty cool areas. Um, I just recently, in my uh, attempted Let's Play that I aborted, started the Northern Forest. I'm not really sure. You know, I, I don't want to start in the Dune Desert. I'm just not a hardcore player, and we'll get to the Dune Desert eventually, but I don't think I want to start there. I actually think I want to start in the Rocky Desert. I haven't done that in a long time, and... Um, there's not as much biomass here, but there's enough. And uh, once you get a chainsaw and you can start cutting things down, you get enough biomass. So we're simply going to call this desert. And we're going to start in the rocky desert. And now we're going to start the game, and I'm going to be a little quiet while the starting intro cinematic plays. And you're going to just see how we land on this planet that we are then going to tame and colonize and turn into a factory. This may take a little bit. Um, for some reason, the intro always seems to take a long time to start up, so I apologize for that. Um, but once we get into the game, it should be pretty, uh, pretty good performance. I haven't noticed any issues. I'm working on a little less RAM than I used to because um, one of my RAM chips went bad, but we still have 16 gigs, which is more than enough. So here we are on our spaceship and I will let the intro play for you. Attention Pioneer. The following instructional video is a summary of your impending duties as an exoplanetary pioneer for Fixit Incorporated. Fixit pioneers have three cyclical assigned pillars of work to ultimately accomplish project assembly. Use provided blueprints to build the necessary buildings. Chart the planet and gather resources to provide desired results and improve your infrastructure. Make sure to report any unusual discoveries to R&D for analysis. 
Expand your factories, outposts, and pipelines through automation and augmentation. That's it. Get to work and be effective. Warning, planet fall imminent. Please remain seated during full procedure. Atmospheric entry in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Planet fall procedure initialized. I love the detail of this opening sequence. You can see on the right hand side over there, the little tool um, and how the strap is flapping and you can see some of the supplies shaking. They really did a really nice job uh, with this interior which we're never actually going to see again because we're going to deconstruct this to begin our first uh, collection of resources. And now we get our first look at the very beautiful and interesting alien planet on which we have landed. <clears throat> We're here. This is our new home. The integrity of your multi-purpose exploration suit is at 100%. Out we go. Remember, efficiency first. Godspeed. And there's our fix a tool. And here we are on the planet. And now Ada will take us through the Welcome tutorial. To planet Massage 2 A B B, your designated sector in the binary star system of Akija. I am Ada, also known as Artificial Directory and Assistant, tasked to support pioneers, such as you, in their mission. You are the third of your sector to survive Planetfall. Congratulations. I wonder how many didn't survive Planetfall. Note. Objective-based introduction initialized. Welcome to onboarding. So this is the tutorial. You can skip it if you want, but I'm going to let it play so that we can First learn together. Objective. Please dismantle the drop pod. The resulting materials will be repurposed to construct a habitat and utility base from now on referred to as the hub. Note, fix it incorporated as cost effective and efficient. We do not waste. So on the left hand side around the middle of the screen you will see the goal dismantle drop pod. These goals only appear in the tutorial portion of the game and then after that you do what you want. Um, there are still targets for you to hit, but this is the tutorial. And they're telling you that you can press F to enter dismantle mode. And if you look on the lower right, you see the shortcuts. And there are a bunch of shortcuts, Q, F, B, V, X, and Tab. <clears throat> but only F is showing right now because they're going to add these little by little as we learn the commands. To move, you use the W and S keys. You can go sideways with A and D, but I never do. If you're used to watching my scrapper videos, you know that I turn with the mouse, and so I use the mouse to move around. You can also crouch with the C key and move very slowly. And by hitting the Shift key, you can toggle running mode and walking mode. So one of the things that's really nice about this game is and she says we do not waste if you build something let's say you build a whole bunch of walls across here and you realize oh i don't like that and you want to dismantle them you get 100 percent of the resources back so in a lot of building games you would either not get the resources back or only get a fraction thereof and it would be a huge waste of resources to make a mistake in satisfactory if you make a mistake no penalty you just take it down and build something else which is really cool now, ultimately, we're going to want to build a base, and I haven't, you know, we're going to have to decide where that's going to be, and we're going to make more than one base, guys, because the base you start with is just going to be a bunch of buildings sitting on the ground because you can't even build foundations yet. But then, after you develop more technologies and you start being able to build walls and conveyor lifts and things like that, you start to be able to create actual structures to house your machinery in. And that is when we're going to try to do something interesting and cool. But that's all in the future. For now, what she wants us to do is hit the F key. And then you can see that if you can dismantle something, it lights up orange, and you press the fire button, which is the left mouse key, and you're done.
And now she's going to tell us more. Please ensure you have your Fixit incorporated Xeno Zapper equipped before leaving the drop zone. Note, according to Fixit regulations, every pioneer should have access to a means of defense against extraterrestrial threats. So there are monsters in this game, space creatures or whatever, and they want us to use the Xeno Zapper to zap them. Third objective. Please familiarize yourself with the resource scanner to find iron. Note, the acquisition of iron is considered essential in preparation for all future objectives. So, we need to scan for iron, because iron is the first resource, and we're going to use some crafting bench uh, structures, like a craft bench and a workshop, to create things with iron, and eventually copper and limestone, to make concrete, to make copper wire, cable, um, iron ingots, iron plates, iron screws, and rods, and those will enable us to start creating more structures, like eventually drilling equipment and stuff like that. This is a beautiful landscape. This is the desert, and one of the things you can do is you can collect stuff directly by hand, so you can... This is actually all wood here. Normally, with biomass you find leaves and you can see some leaves over there but here we've got wood so if you pick it up she should talk to us I would think maybe you just hit the E key over and over again and it lights up if you can pick it up now this structure here is um, mycelium it, it will make mycelium which is kinda like fungus looks like a cactus but we can't pick it up we're gonna have to and you can't sh smack it you're gonna have to cut it with a chainsaw and we need the tech for that so now we've collected a bunch of wood, and you can use that as a biofuel. There's also these nuts and certain other types of berries and certain other types of bacon fruit. <clears throat> and these things can heal you, and she should tell us that. This is one of multiple edibles we have detected in your vicinity, which are within approved nutritional and medical categories as established by R&D. A new research tree can now be accessed in the MAM. So the MAM is the like molecular analysis machine, and you can put items into the MAM, and you can get technology sort of out of there. It will invent new things for you. So these things will heal you if you take damage. So if you look at the bottom left, below the Xeno Zapper that's listed as our equipped item, you can see our health. We have like 10 boxes of health, right? And each time you take damage, you lose part of a box, or maybe an entire box, or several boxes. And once you get all the way down to zero, you die. And then you resurrect at the hub. But we haven't placed the hub yet. It's still in our inventory. So we have to decide where to place the hub. And what she wants us to do is now scan for iron ore with the V key. And this eventually is a dial that will allow us to select different items. But right now, all we can do is iron ore and it's going to send out a pulse and it will tell us where there is iron and if you look at the compass up at the top you can see it's 246 meters to the sort of south west and if I press it again you'll see on the ground those three blue circles that's exactly where it is now I'm going to save the game here just so that we don't lose anything in case there's a crash. And we're going to slowly walk toward the iron. And we'll ping it again so we can see it. And so if you see these little things standing up here, right there, that those are deposits of iron sitting on top of an iron node. Again, we can collect leaves, right? We're going to need lots of those for our biomass. Eventually, Instead of biomass, you can use coal, you can use oil, you can use nuclear power, but for right now, all we're going to have are going to be biomass generators until we get more tech. Now, one of the things to be careful of, let's ping it again, and I'll show you right there. You see this right there is the iron deposit. But oftentimes, deposits, anything that you might want, crashed supply pods, um, unusual research objects, um, like spheres, um, 
A new research tree can now be accessed in the man. Or resource nodes. Anything like that. Resource nodes, um, sort of scientific discoveries, etc. is often protected by some sort of an alien creature. In this case, these nodes are protected. And, you know, here's the deposit of iron. Right, so this is the node of iron, and then there's a deposit on top of it. You can pick up iron from either one, but the deposit is limited. After 50 or 60 units of iron ore, it will disappear. The node is limitless. It goes forever, and you can put a drill down on it, and it, it can run forever and just keep picking up iron. Um, but this these nodes are protected by this thing. This is a little nest of insects, and if I get too close the insects are going to come and chase me and try to attack me and do damage. So here they go, they hatch and then they come after you and they try to surround you and you have to hit them twice and they will hit me because there's no way to kill them quickly. Especially with this this first tool they give you, eventually you can get a better tool. Um, having Defeated them, you can pick up alien carapace, the of this creature might and this can also be researched. Chances of survival. A new research tree can now be accessed in the MAM. So now we're, we're in the midst of, I believe, three iron deposits. And if you look, it says iron ore normal. These are normal iron deposits. If you place a level one mine on top of them, they will get you 60 ore per minute. Um, if it's an impure deposit, it's half as good. It only gets you 30 a minute. And if it's a pure deposit, it's twice as good. It gets you 120 a minute. So this is a decent spot. We've got three normal nodes. And I think there's there may be another one not far from here that might be also normal. So that is not bad. And we've got a good place for collecting iron. So ordinarily, you would expect to put your hub near the iron. And that's probably what we'll do. Fourth objective, build the hub. Note, to complete this objective, the resources salvaged from the drop pod will be consumed. Caution, ensure the hub is built on spacious open terrain close to the presence of iron sources. Failure to do so will likely result in non-optimal progress. So now I'm taking the deposits off the nodes because eventually we're going to want to place automated miners on there. And you can't place them on the node when there's a deposit on it. The deposits go away but the nodes will be permanently here. Okay, so now she says place the hub near the node, the nodes, because you're gonna need a lot of iron at first, and so if you place the hub far away from the iron, you're gonna have to do a lot of running around. Notice there are more insects over there. Now, one of the things that we're gonna have to watch for is when the game first came out, and until actually quite recently, the uh, once you killed something that was an organism, it didn't respawn. But now they do respawn. And the rule is, if you have powered, electrically powered buildings, five buildings, at least one of them powered, within 300 feet of the spawn point, it won't respawn. So at first, we may get some respawning of those insects and we may have to fight them again. And as you can see, if you look down at my health, fighting them and getting hit by them took one box of health. So they're going to wear us down. And what we ultimately want to do is have some powered buildings here so that they don't respawn. So where are we going to place the hub? We don't want to actually place it too close to here because after we build miners, we're going to want to build smelters and constructors. So I want to put the hub out a little bit. <clears throat> There's another um, pod of insects. And I wonder if there's a deposit over there. Let's just go ahead. We'll fight them and get rid of them. The insects probably can't kill me. Shouldn't be able to kill me. If I can hit them. There's one. Gotta hit each one twice. Two. There's one more, which I think I've hit once before. Yep. Okay, so were they protecting something? The question I have is were they maybe protecting some copper? 
I'm going to turn the light on just to see. What do we got? So now there's a big giant land whale, I call them over there. That guy won't hurt us. Those guys are docile. Up, oh, but that spitter is bad. So that guy shoots fire out of his mouth, and he might come after me now. We don't want that. <clears throat> yep. Alright, so now we have to fight a spitter without a hub. That's not good. And he, he might be a high-powered one, too. So we may have to start this game over. <laughs> not sure what happens if you die without the hub being placed. And I don't know if I can run far enough to get him to go back to his spawn point. No, he does not want to give up. Trying to make him give up. Did I make him give up? Or is he still following me? Nope. He's still going to follow me. So we're going to have to fight this guy. So one way to deal with these guys is to jump over them. Ah, we got him. Not too bad. Alright, let's get this hub down so that we don't die. Or that if we die, we can resurrect. So again, the iron's over there. I'm going to put the hub in a nice flat spot. I think this is actually pretty good. So we're going to start. You bring, hit the Q key to bring up what you can place down. And right now we can place down either a craft bench or the hub. The hub actually has a craft bench inside of it. <clears throat> uh, let's see. I'm going to aim the hub. Let's see. I like going in cardinal directions. Let's aim it north. That looks pretty good. So now the hub is just a chassis at first. It's just a bottom framework. And yeah, what we're going to do now is build feature, the rest of the hub. <clears throat> hub feature, hub terminal. Fifth objective, complete <clears throat> hub upgrade one. Note, the craft bench and hub terminal are essential for progression to the next objective. Notice down at the bottom there are four, there are like nine empty boxes. That's your hot bar. And you can put stuff on your hot bar. If you want to build something like craft bench we could hit one and now it's on the hot bar and if we want to build a craft bench we could if we had the materials so there's two things here the craft bench which allows you to make stuff and the hub terminal which is your research center there are one two zero one two three four five six seven eight tiers of research right now we only have tier zero available Within the tier, there are five or six research levels. The first thing available to us is Hub Upgrade 1. To get to Hub Upgrade 1, we need to spend 10 rods. We need to deposit 10 rods into the hub. If we do that and we complete this tier, we will get the ability to build an equipment workshop, a portable miner, and, in, and get extra inventory slots in our inventory. So we select that milestone and it puts the milestone targets up here and then you drag and drop things or shift click to put them in but first we need to make the rods to do that we're going to need to go to the craft bench and make iron ingots so this tells you what you can make and how many of them if you say show only affordable recipes then the rods and, pla and plates disappear because we can't afford them yet because they cost ingots so the way this works is this up here with the hammer tells you how many beats of the hammer it takes. Basically how many seconds it takes to create one of these. Then over here, for every one iron ore out of the 70, we will get one iron ingot. So if we hold this down with the mouse button, or you can press space, and you can see one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And as we're making ingots, it's now telling us on the left-hand side in brackets, next to the iron rods and the iron plates, how many plates and rods we can make. Now remember, we need to make 10 rods, so we have to do that for sure. But I'm gonna go ahead and make all the ingots, and then once we're done making the ingots, we can go ahead and make our iron rods and upgrade our hub. And that's sort of the first thing. You really can't do much of anything else at this point. If you look on the lower right, you can see our shortcuts have filled in. Q is now the build menu. It shows what you can build. 
F is still the decomposition. You de um, decompose things. B is your flashlight. V is the um, sensor for detecting ore and other deposits. And X is your email and tab is your inventory. So now let's go ahead and build the iron rods. And notice those go much faster because it's only times one. So one beat makes an iron rod. And one ingot makes one rod. So we'll make some of those. And then we're going to make some iron plates. Now this also takes three. And three ingots make two iron plates. So you get a little fewer, you get somewhat fewer iron plates out of an ingot than you get iron rods. So now we have 28 plates and 28 rods. You might say, why did I make plates? When it was only asking for rods, that's because I know we're going to need plates in the future. So now we go to the hub, and we can shift-click, and it puts 10 rods into here. Now, why does it need rods? They're in there, and we see it's checked off. You can see that it's checked off up, up here, right? Um, why do we need rods? Well, there's all we have is the base of this. And we need to build a frame around it so that we can continue to build parts to the hub. So what you're doing in this first part is you're constructing your base, your hub, right? So if we upgrade it, what you'll see is now we have a framework around the chassis that we built, right? So now, in addition to this bottom plate, we have this at the top. Building workshop, equipment, portable miner, inventory, additional slots. Hub feature, personal storage. Sixth objective, complete hub upgrade to, note, <clears throat> portable miners require no power and will mine a node until their inventory is full. Note, multiple portable miners can be used on a single node. I want you to notice we've got the moon rising here. It rises in the, like, northwest and sets in the southeast, and so does the sun. All right, so if we come back up in here, it gave us some additional storage. So we really don't need these organs and stuff right now, so I'm going to put them in there. I'm also going to, you can right-click and split. I'm going to do that a couple times, and I'm going to just keep a few barrel nuts in our inventory in case we need to heal. And now we can do other things, right? So if we hit the Q, we now have the equipment workshop, which is what she's telling us we want to build and if you click the plus it tells you on your to-do list what do you need we need five iron plates and five iron rods we have those so I'm gonna go ahead and put the workshop down I don't know I guess we'll just put it kind of over here it doesn't have to be that close to our base put it here for now we're probably I'm probably gonna want to move it the equipment workshop will then let us build some things that are not the crafted resources, but actual equipment. And what we can build is we could build another Xeno Zapper if we had cable, but we don't have the ability to make that yet. Or we can build portable miners. So we're going to go ahead and build four portable miners. We're not going to use them all immediately because we're going to need them for things like copper. But we'll go ahead and get two of them put down. And what you can do is put them on the nodes. So if we come over here to our iron nodes, right you could dig it up like that two ore at a time right but faster is to put down the portable miners sorry keep hitting the wrong button there and now the miners will automatically dig it up for me and I don't have to worry about it they stop when they get full they get full at 100 ore but you can see it's already got... See how fast it's going? So they're going to fill up right away. So we now have that done. And now we need to see what does it want for us to do in Tier 2 of the hub. Or sorry, Hub Upgrade 2. Hub Upgrade 2 will give us the ability to detect copper, make copper ingots, wire, and cable, put up power lines, but we don't have power yet, and make a smelter for when we have power. And smelters will automatically convert ore into ingots so we don't have to do this manually. They will do it for us. Right? And so the idea is you start off having to manually make stuff, but over time what you want to do is start automating it so that 
you're doing things like managing your base and building the base and exploring and your machines are doing the crafting for you. So we're going to do this hub upgrade and then I think we will stop. So it wants 10 plates, which we already have, and it wants 20 rods. So we need to make some rods. And we have just enough, guys. So that we have 20 rods. And we will pop them in there. And now when we do this hub upgrade, it wanted plates, remember, in addition to rods. So if you look at what it built with the first set of rods, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I guess these are ten. Right, so we sort of have the ten rods here. Now if we put more rods and plates in, it will make some walls for us. Right, and so it was using the metal plates to make the walls. And we now have a biomass Hub furnace. Feature, biomass burner. Scanner feature, copper. New buildings and recipes, which can be found in the build menu and craft bench, respectively. So now Seven we can objective. actually... Complete hub upgrade 3. Note, connect buildings to a biomass burner for power. Note, buildings such as the smelter <clears throat> require a recipe to be set. Advice, automate the smelting process and use portable miners for optimal results. So we can use biomass, we can put um, leaves and stuff in here and it will generate electricity. Problem is, although we do have, if you look on um, number two, right, we have the ability to create power lines, right? Once we make cables, we don't have the ability to create power poles. So all we could do is hook this directly up to a single smelter, which is kind of not worth it. So, we're going to need to figure out what our next milestone is. Let's take a look. That is, will get us concrete and reinforced plates. So we'll set that. And we need to find copper. So let's just go ahead and do that. And we'll see where it is. 185 meters that way. And 385. So there's copper right over here. Let's make sure we've got our weapon out. And you can see the little bit of flashing over there. That is the copper. And it is protected by the insects. And there's two copper nodes right there. Both protected by insects. So I'm going to fight them eventually, but not right now because we've been in this episode long enough. So as the sun rises in the west, right behind where we're going to go to get our copper, we're going to stop here, and I will be back in the next episode to collect copper and get started making wire and things like that. Until next time, I am Scrapperlock, and this has been Satisfactory. <laughs>